Hi. Today I'm here with another topic in operative delivery, or operative obstetrics. The topic is forceps delivery. Forceps is a pair of instruments designed to assist extraction of the fetal head and thereby accomplishing the delivery of the fetus. If there is any obstruction in the passage of the baby or if there is a delay in the passage of the baby or if the rotation is not occurring effectively, in that case, we are introducing a device into the birth canal and by using that device, we will hold the head of the baby, that is forceps is the name of that device and by using that, we will hold the head of the baby and we will achieve traction or we will apply traction at the same time, we will uh, try for the rotation of the fetal head also. Now we are going to see the types of forceps. In that first one is Simpson's forceps. It is invented in, uh, in the year 1848 and the type of lock in this forceps is English lock. Here in this picture you can see the two blades of this, these are the two blades of the forceps and this curve is the cephalic curve of the forceps, this one. And these two blades are joined together or articulated over here. And this articulation or this lock is, or it's locked here, this lock is English lock in the case of Simpson's forceps. And this Simpson forceps is a forceps with elongated pelvic curve and cephalic curve. It's having more length when compared with the other forceps. And this we are using commonly in the case when there is substantial molding of the fetal head. That is, if the fetal head is elongated during its passage through the birth canal due to the compression of the birth canal. That is, if it is elongated, it's a temporary elongation only. And if it is elongated in such a way, in that case, we are using this Simpson's forceps. Next one is Keelan's forceps. It is invented in the year 1915 by, by a Norwegian scientist. And it is having a small pelvic curve. Here, when comparing the previous thing, you can see this length is less or it is small. And the type of lock is sliding lock. This is sliding lock. And this we are using commonly for the high, if the head is high and naturally we are using it. This, it's, I already told you that it's cephalic curve and pelvic curve is small in size. So commonly we are using it for achieving the rotation of the fetal head. If the rotation has not occurred properly for rotating the fetal head manually, we are using it. And we are not using it for applying traction over the fetal head. And the last one is Wrigley's forceps. The Wrigley's forceps, here you can see a small one. Its length is also less when comparing with the other forceps. And it is using for low or outlet delivery. Wrigley's forceps is designed for the, by the general practitioner uh, in such a way that its length is less so it will not reach high into the pelvis. That's the main advantage of this. Next is about the parts of the forceps. In this you can see this portion already I have told you that it is known as the blade and this portion is the shank. shank. And this is the lock. We have seen two types of locks are the English lock and sliding lock. And this is the handle where the operator can hold the forceps. And if you are looking into this blade, it is having a curve over here. This lower side curve, this is known as the pelvic curve. And it is in direction of the maternal or it follows the direction of the maternal pelvis. And here you can see a fenestration. A hole is there. On both sides it is there and this portion is applied to the fetal head and the portion of the blade which is coming in contact with the fetal head is known as the cephalic curve or the curve which is coming in contact with the fetal head is the cephalic curve and this hole is the fenestration and this is the toe of the blade, pelvic curve already I have told you this is the heel of the blade and this hole is fenestration. So this complete portion is the blade. Next about the shank. The shank connects the blade to the handle and provide length to the device. And these are parallel or closing. And in the case of Simpsons and in the case of Keel and Sorsips, the shank is having more length. But in the case of Wrigley's, it is less in centimeter. And the lock already we have seen, two types of locks are there. 
type uh, sliding lock and English lock. And the last portion of the forceps is handle. The handles are where the operator holds the device and apply traction to the fetal head. So these are the main parts of the forceps. Next, we can see the criteria for the forceps delivery. For the outlet forceps delivery, the scalp should be visible at the vagina or at the introitus without separating the labia. The fetal skull should reach the pelvic floor. The, the sagittal suture can be in the anterior posterior, right or left oblique diameter of the pelvis. That rotation even if it has not occurred also, that is not an issue, but the head should be low or it should be visible at the introitus. That is an outlet forceps delivery. And low forceps means the head should be encased and the station should be more than plus 2. Station of the fetal head should be more than plus 2. We know that if the head is at the level of the ischial spine, the station is 0. And if it is 2 cm below the level of the ischial spine, the station is plus 2. So it should be in that level. And the degree of rotation is not an issue. Only it depends on the station of the fetal head. And next one is mid forceps. If the station is above plus 2, plus 2 we are calling it as, that is between 0 to 2, but the head should be engaged. And the last one is high forceps. High forceps actually nowadays we are not practicing. If the head is not engaged and in that case if you are applying forceps, that is known as high forceps delivery, but nowadays we are not practicing the high forceps delivery. Now we can see the criteria for the forceps delivery. The fetal and uteroplacental criteria include, already I told you, the head should be engaged, the cervix should be fully dilated, the membranes of the fetal, fetal membranes, that is amnion and covering, it should be ruptured. You should know the position and station of the fetal head. And the maternal criteria include, cephalopelvic disproportion should not be there, the bladder should be emptied and adequate analgesics has to be given to the mother. These criteria uh, we can see in the expansion of the forceps here F stands for the favorable head position and station. It should be a cephalic presentation or even in the case of breech presentation also. Uh, if after for achieving the delivery of the after coming head we can use it. And station already I told you that it should be engaged. If it is more than plus 2 uh, we are using mid forceps. If it is above that we are I told you that it is high forces but nowadays we are not using it and the cervix should be fully dilated that is O for open cervix the cervix should be fully dilated. R for status of the membrane that is the membrane should be ruptured. C for the uterine contractions whether it is present or absent that you should see and E for the engagement of the head and the bladder should be emptied E stands for both. And P for the pelvic matrix, that is we should assess the pelvis and we should exclude the possibility of the cephalopelvic disproportion. And S for the lithotomy position, that is by using the stirrups, S for stirrups, by using the stirrups we can give the lithotomy position. And the indications include if the second stage is prolonged, that is in the case of nulli paras woman, nulli paras woman means a lady with her first delivery in her first delivery and if she fails to deliver after two hours that is second stage is more than two hours without anesthesia and with anesthesia if she is taking more than three hours we can go for the forceps and in the case of multi paris that is if the woman is in her second or third delivery in that case if she is taking more than one hour without anesthesia and with anesthesia if she is taking more than two hours you can go for the forceps delivery. And if you are expecting or if you are suspecting immediate potential for the fetus, potential fatal com fetal complications, that is if you are expecting fetal distress or severe bleeding or something is there, in that case in order to cut short the second stage of labor, you can go for the forceps delivery. And in order to shorten the second stage for maternal benefits, that includes exhaustion. If the mother is exhausted, if the mother is having bleeding, if cardiac or pulmonary diseases are there for the woman and if she is not able to cope with the stress of labor and if there is a history of spontaneous pneumothorax, in that cases, uh, if she is getting 
exhausted again that may leads to the complications. So in order to cut short the second stage of labor you can go for the forceps. And another one is fetal malpositions. It includes the after coming head in the case of breech delivery. Next contraindications. The contraindications for the vaginal, all the contraindications for the vaginal delivery is a contraindication for the forceps delivery also. And if the patient is refusing in that case also you should not go for the forceps delivery. If the cervix is not fully dilated, we should not go for the forceps delivery. And if there is inability to determine the presentation of an fetal head position, in that case also we should not go for the forceps delivery. If the pelvic size is inadequate, that is if you are suspecting cephalopelvic disproportion, in that case also we are not doing it. And if there is a, if you have tried for the op operated delivery, for example already if you have tried for the vacuum and if it is a failure, in that case we won't use commonly, but rarely people are using still. And we should make sure that adequate anesthesia and analgesia is there and if it is not there, you should not go for the forceps and adequate experienced operator should be there for or a staff should be there for doing the forceps delivery. And now let us see how to apply the blades. First you should identify the right blade and left blade. After identifying the blade, First insert the four fingers of the semi supinated right hand along the lateral wall of the vagina. Introduce the right hand into the vagina and these fingers will guide the blades during the insertion and protect the vaginal wall. Under the guidance of this right hand, take the blade with the left hand in a thumb holding manner, in a pen holding manner with the index, middle and thumb finger and introduce it introduce the blade between the guiding finger and the fetal head by pushing it downward and backward. After the application of the blade you should make sure that it is over the parietal eminence. After that introduce the right blade, introduce the two fingers into the right lateral wall of the vagina alongside the baby's head and introduce the right blade at the, in the same way but it should be holding the right hand. See now this picture shows that the forceps are supplied. This is the correct position. After applying the two blades, you should go for the locking of the blades. Introduction of the left blade. See, this picture shows how to introduce the blade. So here, in the left occipital anterior position, they are introducing the left blade. After that, they are introducing the right, already the left blade is in position. Now they are introducing the right blade. And next is locking of the blades. When you are locking, of, locking the blade, you should not apply force. For locking, you should not apply the force. And later, after locking, you just, uh, you just apply the traction and achieve the delivery and remove the blades. And ensure the correct ap application of the blade. Apply steady and intermittent traction during the contraction. During the time of contraction, just for assisting the contraction, uh, for assisting the labor process, you can apply traction additionally that will help for the easy delivery. While applying traction, grip the handle placing the middle finger in between the shanks. The direction of pull should correspond to the axis of the birth canal. The pull is downward and backward until the head comes to the perineum, then horizontal, then changes upward and forward towards the mother's abdomen. That is, the direction of pull should be exactly by follow, following the direction of the birth canal. Now we can see the complications of the forceps delivery. It includes maternal complications and fetal complications. The maternal complications again it is divided into immediate complications and remote complications. The immediate complications include there is a chance for injury to the cervix and vagina. There is a chance for extension of the episiotomy. Chance for nerve injury is there. Chance for postpartum hemorrhage. Chance for anesthetic complications. Chance for infection in the Puperal period, puperal sepsis, chances there. The remote complications include the perineal scars may become painful in the future. There is a chance for painful sexual intercourse, dyspareunia. Chance for low backache is there. Chance for genital prolapse, uterine prolapse is there. And there is a chance for incontinence, that is inability to control the passage of the urine due to the damage of the sphincter. Now we can go for the fetal complications. The fetal complications 
also can be divided into immediate and remote. The immediate fetal complications include fetal asphyxia. There is a chance for facial bruising when you are applying the blade. The blade may come in contact with the face and it may produce damage to the soft tissues of the face. Chance for intracranial hemorrhage. Already I told you that when you are locking the blade, you should not apply excessive pressure. If you are applying excessive pressure, there is a chance for crushing and there is a chance for intracranial hemorrhage also. And chance for cephalhematoma, that is collection of fluid in the uh, under the periosteum. There is a chance of facial palsy due to the damage to the facial nerve. When you are applying traction, there is a chance for damage to the facial nerve and it may produce facial palsy. Skull fracture chance is there, especially if you are applying excessive pressure over the blades. And when you are applying traction, there is a chance for cervical spine injury. And the remote complications include chance for cerebral palsy is there due to the residual cerebral injury. Thank you for watching this video. Soon we will be meeting with the next video and for the future videos please subscribe the channel. Thank you. Thank you once again.